Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, it's a blessing to be here with all of you. And I have to tell you that I have very, very fond memories of uh, trips to India. I've been there at least three times, maybe four times. And it's always been a blessing. Uh, I have been to Mumbai, Pune, uh, Bangalore, Ahmedabad, Calcutta, Ranchi, um, and New Delhi. And so I've, I've gotten around just a tiny bit. You have a very large country, as you know. But uh, I've made a lot of friends over there, and uh, I consider as just precious, precious memories and blessings the time that I spent. And, and Prabhu, I still remember like yesterday, the time that we spent together visiting people, um, you know, weaving down the streets uh, there in Ahmedabad and praying with people and then coming home to uh, your house uh, where your wife used to cook me good breakfast. I remember that and, and other meals. And uh, so it was just a real blessing. And so I am just very, very grateful for the, uh, for the time that we were able to spend. And uh, I don't know who all is here, others that I might have met on, on other trips, but uh, thank you for your friendship. And um, I'm just grateful that uh, the, the work of the Lord is, is, is going forward there in India as it's in many other places. You know, I have learned a lot since I was, uh, I was there in India. I've grown in many ways, and uh, my brother Prabhu mentioned uh, about the resources available on my website, discipleheart.com. Um, there's more than 600 pages of, of, of resources there, and it's uh, based on the Bible, the writings of Ellen White and other Adventist writers. And I think you will be blessed. And, and I put many things there, and so it's, it's a privilege. The theme, though, for, for our time together is um, praying in times of challenges. And I think that's a very significant one because, as you know, the world is in turmoil right now in so many ways. Our country is going through changes that we would have never expected in the past. And so uh, for my wife and I here at home, uh, it's definitely a, a significant change for us, not one that we were necessarily expecting at all, but one that, that, that you know is coming and, and we should have expected. So I'd like to have a word of prayer, and then we can look at others who have been praying in times of crisis, okay? Let's pray. Father in heaven, this is really your time. I'm grateful, Father, for my brothers and sisters there in India who are carefully praying, uh, seeking your blessing, seeking your intervention for people in many places of the world uh, in many respects. And Father, they are your children, and I'm to represent you. And I pray that, Father, the things that I share will be a blessing to them. And so please send the Holy Spirit to help me to speak to their hearts and to encourage them. I ask these things, Lord, with gratitude in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, um, one of the stories that comes to mind, and I think it's a very significant story, uh, one that is worth uh, remembering as, as we are together, is the story of, of Daniel. Daniel is someone who, who was taken as a captive from his home in Jerusalem, sent off to Babylon, and between he and his friends, they face many moments of challenges. And I'd just like to talk a little bit in kind of a global way about some of what we learn from Daniel because he's just one person who, who did a lot of praying in times of difficulty. And, and I'm sure that all of you uh, have faced that and probably in some ways more than what I've ever experienced because I know how challenging it can be to be an Indian. The first thing I notice is that Daniel is taken captive uh, from his family. And I don't think that was an easy experience for Daniel and his friends. Um, I think they took young people uh, against their wishes and I can imagine this, that his parents come, you know, were, were very upset about it, begged God to bring him back, begged God to stop what was going on. But it just says that he, the, the king of Babylon came, besieged it, and the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, and that uh, captives were taken away. And we find that, that Daniel goes, and even though now he's out of his own home, and he's in a foreign country where there isn't the religious uh, influences, he remains faithful to God. And I think that that's one thing we must remember when we are praying in times of, uh, of challenges is that no matter what is going on, we must remain faithful to God. Uh, if there's one thing you learn about, about Daniel, it is that he's faithful. And, you know, we talk about witnessing, we talk about making a difference, but a significant point here is that his witness is the result of his obedience, okay? And that's very important. Uh, you know, we, we have tried to use nice programs. We used, you know, PowerPoint presentations. We have music. We have those kinds of things to attract people. But in Daniel's case, um, 
He's very obedient. And so we find that his prayers are along the lines of obedience. And so they're taken, and you know that, that he gets placed in the school, and there he sees this food. And uh, in reading uh, from the book Patriarchs and Prophets, rather Prophets and Kings, uh, that for Daniel, uh, when he looked at refusing the food, he thought that that might well uh, result in his death. Uh, because, you know, for him to insist on having the Jewish ways could have brought the, uh, the, the most horrifying consequences into his life. But in verse 8 of chapter 1, it says, He purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's delicacies, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the chief of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. And so Daniel made a decision before the trials came that he was going to be faithful to God. And we must not forget that, because if you wait until the crisis, it will be too late. You must make the decision no matter what, I am going to be faithful to God. I'm going to be obedient to God. I'm going to follow what you know, I have learned from the scriptures. And we have to give Daniel's parents much, much credit for the godliness of their son. And, 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 and Daniel respectfully, and this is very important, he respectfully asked permission of the eunuch, the man in charge, that he be tested. He did not insist on having his way. He was, he was respectful. Now, that doesn't mean he would have disobeyed, but he, but he was uh, very careful. And it says that God had brought Daniel into the favor and goodwill of the chief of eunuchs. That meant that though Daniel was there against his wishes, though he perhaps might have seen his parents killed, we don't know, though this was a complete change of circumstances, that instead of becoming bitter, instead of becoming angry, he apparently was, was serving in that school. He was there in that school with a good attitude. And I believe that when we are praying, we must pray, you know, uh, to have the, the right attitude as, as we are going through these things. And uh, so he, he asked for a test to be given a, a healthy veg diet, if I can put it that way, and water to drink. He said, we don't, we don't need that. And he said, then in verse 13, then let our appearance be examined before you. Um, and the appearances of the young men who eat the portion of the king's delicacies, as you see fit, so deal with your servants. He was so confident that obeying God would bring the best outcome that he didn't say, you know, if this doesn't work out, then, then you know, I'm out of here. I, I will not serve and I'll try to slow down. He said, just test us for 10 days. Made a decision. He asked for a test. And lo and behold, because they were faithful to God, God blessed them, made them, many times wiser, many, many times wiser than all the others. In fact, in verse 20 of chapter 1, it says he was 10 times wiser. As a result of that, Daniel was promoted, not because he was saying flattering things, not because he was trying to, to say things to get himself into the favor of the people there, but because he was obedient to God, God gave him favor and God gave him blessings that were supernatural. Now notice what happens after this. Um, Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. God gives him a dream, and God gives it in a particular way that the wise men cannot remember what went on. And so Nebuchadnezzar comes around and says, you know, I'd like to know what this was about. And so um, the king called the, 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 uh, the astrologers, the magicians, all of those people, King says, I had a dream, you know, tell me what I dreamed, what it's about. And, and this is just a paraphrase. They said, well, how could we do that? No one could tell the king what that is. And the king wasn't, uh, you know, a, was a, a wise man. And he said, hold on, if you can't tell me what the dream is, why should I believe what you have to say in terms of the interpretation? And Daniel was given to fits of temper. He, uh, he said, kill them. And so Daniel, who's been barely installed into his position, there's a knock on the door, and it's someone there to execute him. Now, brothers and sisters, would you be praising God if someone came to your door and said, we've come to put you to death? Uh, probably not. Probably not. But there they were, and, and Daniel, he asked for time. He respectfully asked for time. And uh, so, uh, verse 16 says, so Daniel went in and asked uh, the king to give him time that he might tell the king the interpretation. 
And so then we notice another important thing. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah's companions. He didn't just depend on praying on his own, but he joined others. Okay, he joined others that they might seek the mercies from the God of heaven concerning this secret so that Daniel and his companions might not perish. And the Bible says that God revealed the secret to Daniel in the night vision. Now, there is some significance there as well, because you see, Daniel prayed with four people, but only Daniel was given the knowledge of the dream. And there are times, brothers and sisters, when God chooses to favor one person over another person, not because he, he doesn't favor and bless them as well, but, but, but God often tests us. And, and, and so they were tested, the three were tested because God answered their prayer through Daniel. I believe the reason God blessed them so much was because they were in unity. They, they weren't you know, trying to see who was first and who had the most influence at all. So Daniel goes to the king. And Daniel could have said to the king, King, you're lucky that I'm, that I'm here. Uh, but he didn't say that. He went to the king and uh, he says, The secret, verse 27 now of chapter 2, says the secret which the king has demanded and the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, they cannot declare, but there is a God in heaven. And so Daniel was very quick to give credit to God as being the revealer of secrets. And he said, and he's the one who's made known to King Nebuchadnezzar what will be in the latter days, your dream and the visions of your head upon your head. And then he proceeded to tell the king. Daniel was always giving credit to God. And brothers and sisters, something that I'm increasingly convinced about is that one of the reasons God cannot use us more is because we are so you know, desirous of, of gaining credit to ourselves. Look at what I've done. Look at what my prayers brought about. But Daniel, he could have, he could have stayed as I said, Daniel, uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, you can get rid of all of those other people. I mean, they couldn't answer your prayers, but I could put me in charge. No, he said, no one can do that. But there is a God in heaven. And my Bible says uh, that God honors those who honor him. And so as Daniel was honoring God, God honored him as well. Okay. And it's interesting, the man who heard the knock at the door, you know, at the beginning of the day, and they were the coming, or, or the, the day before, and they were coming to execute him, at the end of the story, it's just a, a fascinating, fascinating thing in verse 46 of chapter 2, then King Nebuchadnezzar fell on his face prostrate before Daniel. Instead of Daniel falling on his knees before the king and begging for mercy, he was faithful. He'd gone to God. God had answered the prayer. And at the end of the experience, it's the king on his knees before Daniel. And that's the way it should be. There was such a, a manifest presence of God in Daniel and the way he answered and the information he gave that the king knew that this God of heaven was greater than any God he'd known before. And he puts himself down on his knees before Nebuchadnezzar. And... Uh, he makes a statement in 47, truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and revealer of secrets. Okay, he recognized that, that there was something about this God and promoted Daniel, gave him many great gifts. What an opportunity for Daniel. But, but notice in verse 49, Daniel doesn't forget his friends. Sometimes we forget our friends, but Daniel says, hold on, I have three friends. And they were all promoted. Daniel was very generous with other people. I'm not going to talk about the story of, uh, of the three friends in, in the plains of, of Jiro. I want to go, go on to uh, a, a little bit further, although that's a very significant story. Uh, but I want to go in the, in the limited time we have to, uh, to the story in, in, in chapter 6, which is the story of the, of the lion's den. Now, this is most interesting. Daniel has been so faithful he is so honest that when the new ruler comes along, instead of saying we need to get rid of him because we don't, we, we don't know if we can trust him, he was kept. In fact, the king decided to place Daniel over the others, which of course brought great jealousy from the, from the, uh, the, the other you know, magicians and wise men of, of that particular king. It says why, verse 3, because an excellent spirit was in him and the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. You see, Daniel had the same good attitude that he brought with him from Jerusalem. He had the same obedience to God, the same commitment to integrity and, and being faithful. 
And so as he's going through these experiences, he's always faithful to God and God is always blessing him and it's recognized. And so Darius has said, you know, this is a man we want working for our government and they place him in the position. Well, the other wise men did their best to find some way to accuse Daniel. They looked everywhere in his life they could, but they could find nothing. Everything was above board. You see, Daniel was one of those people who, who, who would rather die than tell a lie. And so um, they, they thought, they, they, they talked, and they tried to scheme, and nothing was working. They finally said, you know, there's only one thing we can do, and that is to create a law that would cause Daniel to to disobey his God, and we know that Daniel would never do that, and we'll have him. Oh, brothers and sisters, wouldn't it be nice if you and I had such a strong walk with Jesus, such a strong commitment to being obedient to God, to following the Ten Commandments, that uh, people would, would bring us down by way of our obedience to God. And you know that's what's going to happen in the last days. I think we're living in the last days, actually. In fact, I know we're living. I think you know that, too. They passed this law. They passed this law. It was an unkind law. It said that if anyone prayed to another god, then, uh, then, then, then you know the king, that they would be thrown in the in the lion's den. Okay, anyone for thirty days. Now Daniel, it says, had the habit of praying three times a day, and he would pray before his open window. Everyone in Jerusalem knew that Daniel was a God fearing, uh, Creator God believing, obeying person. And so when Daniel, verse 10, knew that the writing was signed. He went home and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since the early days. Now, there's great, great um, information there. First of all, when Daniel realized what this law was about and he knew it was against him, it says he went home. And in his upper room window, the same window where he always appeared before, he gets down on his knees to pray, to pray towards Jerusalem. Now, I think you and I would agree that, that there could have been a chance of Daniel saying, this is a dangerous time, and Lord, please understand that I have to, to pray while I'm walking, you know, with my eyes open. Others won't know what I'm praying, but you'll know I'm praying. That should be okay. Or Daniel might have said, God, you know, this time I need to be in the stairwell praying there. Uh, so that no one can see that I'm still praying, and for 30 days we're going to we're going to have to change something. But uh, no, Daniel says he goes to his upper room, to the open window, and there he prayed, with his window open towards Jerusalem, and he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. So Daniel was praying where everyone could see. But it says something else that's very significant prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom. Okay? His prayer was giving thanks in that circumstance, as was his custom, it says, since his early days. Now, I have to tell you, there are times when I find it difficult to give thanks. I'm being very honest with you, and I think you do too. You know, sometimes we're surprised by things that when, when we're surprised, and I have to tell you, some of the things going on in our country right now are very surprising. Daniel saw, quote unquote, the handwriting on the wall for his life. They were trying to have him thrown into the lion's den. And, and up to that time, I don't think the Bible speaks of anyone that was thrown in with, with lions that had survived. And as far as Daniel knew, he was going to become supper for those lions or breakfast, whatever the case might be. But it says he prayed three times that day and gave thanks as was his custom. Why did Daniel have the custom of giving thanks? Was it just something he decided to do on that occasion? No, I think as he reviewed his life and the life of his friends, he realized that no matter what God was doing in all things, God is working for good. When he was taken as captive from Jerusalem, certainly it didn't look good at the outcome, but you know, it got him to Babylon where God had a need for Babylon, for, for, for Daniel. That was a praise the Lord experience. He didn't know it when he was going, but, but, but it was. And when he gets into that school and he's tested on diet, that was also a significant praise the Lord moment. Did you hear me? Yeah. Nothing that would have been expected, but, but in the hands of God, it was for the good. And uh, because of that test and because Daniel was faithful in the test, God was able to bless 
Daniel. And then uh, you go from there to, uh, to the story of his friends, and I won't go into great detail, but they chose to be f faithful to God. As a result of that, uh, a great proclamation was made, and they discovered that, that, that they could be in, the, in the, the fiery furnace. And maybe before the end of the week, we'll talk about that story too. But, but the point is, is that at the end of the story, there was every reason to give thanks for that experience. And now Daniel, though he doesn't know the outcome, is giving thanks to God because God is going to take care of him. And so uh, the, the three enemies see what Daniel's doing, or, or, or however number of people these are, and they go running to the king and say, hey, king, Daniel's praying, and, and suddenly the king knew that he'd been tricked. But the law, the Medes, and the Persians dictated, they required that Daniel be placed in the lion's den, and so eventually uh, that's what happened. Um, the king tried to deliver Daniel, it says in uh, verse 14 of chapter 6. Set his heart on delivering him and labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. But when that did not work, they commanded and brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. But the king spoke to Daniel and said, Your God whom you serve continually, he will deliver you. Even the king thought that maybe, somehow, maybe the God of Daniel, who had made him such a unique person, would deliver him. Then a stone was brought and laid in the mouth of the, of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet. He went home. And that night the king, so sobered about what was going on, spent the night fasting. No musicians were brought before him, it says in verse 18, and also his sleep went from him. I think he heard the, the lions making noise that night. In the morning he went with haste to the lion's den, and when he came there he cried out with a lamenting voice. In other words, he fully expected to hear silence. He said, Daniel, Daniel, has your God whom you serve continually been able to deliver you from the lions? And notice he says, the God whom you serve continually, no matter what Daniel was doing, he was always serving God. He was always faithful to God. And Daniel called up to him, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth so that they had not hurt me because I was found innocent before him. Also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. What an amazing thing. Daniel says, God closed the, the lion's mouth. And then he explains why. It wasn't because Daniel was especially favored or because those were not hungry lions. He said, he said God closed the lion's mouth because I was found innocent before him. And also, King, I've done no wrong before you. It was because Daniel was innocent and had been right before the king that God said, I'm going to protect him. There's no reason why I shouldn't protect him. Therefore, Daniel was taken up. Okay? And it's interesting. Then the king gave the command and those who had accused Daniel cast them in with their children and their wives, and the lions immediately killed them even before they landed on the ground. And let me tell you something, there's no safer place than being in the lion's den. Who's going to attack you in the lion's den? When you are in that special place of God's protection, you are safe. No one's going to follow you there at all. Those who thought they were going to cause mischief for Daniel, they were thrown in. And so, my friends, as you are praying, pray giving thanks as was Daniel's custom, as, as I hope is your custom. You know, there's some verses I want to share with you. In, uh, in, in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 5.20 says, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father. So we should give thanks always for all things. That includes the good things and the bad things. Or well, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you, okay? In everything, give thanks for this is God's will. Now, how can God do that? It's because nothing is allowed to come to us before God has already seen the way forward to take care of us. And finally, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, right? Okay? Be anxious for nothing. Are you uh, an obedient child of God? Are you anxious? Or are you choosing to be anxious for nothing? In everything, though, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, letting your requests be made known to God. As we bring this to a close, the life of Daniel teaches us a very important lesson. Number one, no matter what's going on, be faithful, be obedient, no matter what the consequences might be. Two, you aren't really walking in victory with Jesus in the difficult times unless you can do it with a smile on your face. And three, say it. Give thanks to God because at least this is what I found. I think you'll find it as well. 
what we say with our mouths affects our emotions. If you're just talking about, oh, God is cruel, God has forgotten me, it's going to get bad. It's going to look bad. But if we're saying, I'm going to give thanks because that's God's will, I'm supposed to say thank you about everything, you're going to find that God can come through and do miracles for you. I believe that with all my heart. Okay? I think very important words are yes and thank you. Yes, Lord, you allow this to happen. Thank you. This is for my good. That's it for tonight. Let's have a word of prayer and thank the Lord that no matter what's going on, that somehow we're to say thanks because in all things, God is able to work for good. I need it right now. You do too. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much that we've been able to spend a few minutes talking about how Daniel prayed in the course of the challenges that were facing him. Lord, he, he was dragged from his home, but he didn't get bitter towards God. He just remained faithful. He remained obedient, and he tried to serve you there in Babylon as a captive. Given the opportunity of a lifetime to be a part of the, the, the king's inner circle, offered the best food, the best education, but couldn't accept the food, took a risk of his life. But by being faithful, Lord, it was found that he was ten times wiser. Later tested, you know, uh, about this dream. He prays with his friends, and you give him the vision, and he gives you all the credit. Daniel was known as, as, a, as a man who served you continually, faithfully. It was his custom to say thank you, Lord. And I think if he could say thank you with, with, with the knowledge that he was going to be thrown into the lion's den, maybe we should as well. So bless each brother and sister, young, middle-aged, younger, older, whatever the case might be. Bless them and answer their prayers in the best way, in the glory, most glorious way, in the quickest way, Father, consistent with your glory and their good and uh, what will best promote your kingdom and blessings. Thank you for having been with us this evening, Lord. I ask these things in the name of Jesus with gratitude. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor, for uh, the very important and interesting.